High demand and a high stress event can rapidly deteriorate one of the most powerful resources you have, your ability to focus. It's also the one resource you must have to secure your finances, career and lifestyle during turbulent times. And with volatility in the marketplace and the hangover our brains are still experiencing from the past few years, it's left many wondering, how do you not just cope, but keep going and flourish in uncertain times? To do so, we need to understand the Zaganic effect, sensory input, your window of tolerance, dopamine and nutritional psychology. You see, for the past five years, I've taught well over 80,000 people through my book Unstoppable and online programs, how to cope with uncertainty. In fact, I have a free one hour masterclass where I give you a complete roadmap to go from unfocused to unstoppable. But today, we're going to hone in on three steps you've never heard of before that you can immediately take to regain a sense of control. Whether it's a pandemic or market volatility, because our brain craves knowing what happens next, it starts subconsciously making decisions about where your focus needs to be if it doesn't have the answers. That's because uncertainty creates an open loop. Think about the last time you were watching a movie, but the power cut out, or you got interrupted and you missed the ending. This is called the Zaganic effect, which is the tendency of our brain to focus on incomplete tasks more than it does completed ones. Unfortunately, this may also lead to catastrophizing and picturing a worst case scenario, even if it may not transpire. Right now, we don't know what the next year will bring economically due to various compounding factors we've never seen before in history. It's hard to predict what happens or what to do. It's creating an open loop where you may find yourself anxiously searching for answers that you just don't have. Because of this, your fight or flight response may get triggered. You may feel yourself getting anxious and doubting your decision-making capability, which is completely normal. This happens because when you're in a state of fight or flight, your primal brain's sole purpose is focused on survival, not strategy, and definitely not your goals. It's actively pulling your attention away from what you can do and what's in your realm of influence and control. And I'll get to how you can manage it and mentally close this open loop so you can proceed forward with confidence. But next, we have the window of tolerance. When we're in a normal functioning state and we've met some of our basic human needs, such as physiological, security, belonging, self-esteem, and self-actualization, based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we operate in our window of tolerance within which we respond to stimulus without becoming overly aroused and then being able to settle ourselves naturally. But when we become overstimulated by the news or social media, it can put us into hyper arousal, which is survival physiology. The smallest of things is gonna set you off. This is because you're operating outside of your normal range of functioning. Being in hyper arousal for extended periods of time depletes both your biological and physiological resources you need to cope and for your brain to operate at its best. When they run out, you not only burn out, you also drop into hypo arousal. This is where you feel numb and nothing will get you up and going. By recognizing where you are in the window of tolerance and by overlaying it with what needs are and what needs are not being met, you start to get a grasp on A, how you're responding, and B, which needs you need to meet to feel secure in the coming months. And this helps you to establish a path forward that we'll dive into in just a minute. Which leads us to three, dopamine. When we enter a state of fear, dopamine and adrenaline are two of 30 different hormones in your body that are released. I covered adrenaline in my last video. Dopamine is known as your feel good hormone and your motivation molecule because it drives us to act and pursue our goals. When you sit down to do a plan to navigate the current circumstances to get ahead of the curve and you're excited about that plan, dopamine will increase. While it may seem counterintuitive, you must manage your dopamine levels during times of uncertainty to help you stay motivated through the tough times. When you're in a low dopamine state due to chronic stress and other factors that I'll get into in a second, you'll feel tired, unmotivated and unhappy. You'll have trouble concentrating on solutions 
and instead amplify your problems. I dive into more detail in this area in the free one hour masterclass. But the question is, how do you maintain a level of motivation when you've taken hit after hit and your dopamine baseline has dropped and you're in a state of hypo arousal? And how do you ward off low dopamine levels and burnout so you're prepared for the future? Well, you take these three steps and the third is the most important. Step one, you manage sensory input. While it's easy to get addicted to the news or market fluctuations, ask yourself, is it giving you your desired outcome? Such as helping you to make smart decisions right now based on logic instead of fear. Give your brain a break throughout the day, especially from social media, which spikes your dopamine. Take time to get out into nature and recalibrate and consolidate your thoughts. Step two, apply nutritional psychology. Pay attention in the coming weeks to what you eat and how you feel because it's going to affect your ability to focus on what matters most in the coming months. A brain fueling diet can reduce brain fog caused by stress, elevate your mood, promote feel good neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin and sharpen your memory while simultaneously improving your productivity levels. While a diet with highly processed foods, excess caffeine and carbohydrates will amplify your emotions through the ups and downs, making them unbearable and making you ineffective. Step three, close the open loop. While it's impossible to predict what happens next, mentally rehearsing your intended outcomes will help to close the loop your brain has created due to uncertainty. It will also close the gap between sitting in a state of inertia and not knowing what to do and getting up, doing your research, upskilling in your profession or stabilizing your business so you have what you need to ride the wave. Think of it like this. Have you ever wondered why some people become bridezillas before their wedding? Brock's mom's a little bit jealous about me marrying her son because she thinks that I'm taking over Brock's whole entire life. I'm not worried about it. She'll be dead and long gone soon enough. Other than external pressure for everything to go to plan, it's because they can't see past their wedding day. It's as if life ceases to exist if it doesn't go to plan. By visually rehearsing what you need to do in the coming months and concentrating on what you have to do regardless of what happens, you'll more effectively manage your stress and emotional responses and regain your sense of control and focus. And the great news is, if it's not as bad as it's expected, you'll be 10 times better off anyway. But now is the time to act. Click the link to join the free one hour masterclass where I'll show you how to go from unfocused, unmotivated and undriven to unstoppable. So you have everything you need to make this your best year yet.